Welcome to Sir Stay Faith Refresher. So far, our Theology of the Body or TOB series has presented man as a gift made free to love and gifted with the capacity to love. Is love a foolproof recipe for happiness? How does one fall in love? What is the role of our sexual desires, sentiments, and emotions in our search for love? Is it possible to love and be loved forever? How is God present in human love? For the last session of our TOB series, we have invited speaker who will try to answer these questions revolving around our natural desires, authentic love, and true happiness. He is also a teacher like our previous guest speakers and the guidance counselor of Southridge School, Alabama. He is well versed in giving classes about theology of the body. Given his background, I hope you are excited as I am to hear his thoughts and learn from his experiences in dealing with the young. How do we teach them at this time and age? Where loving seems associated rather to using the other for personal gains. How can we accompany parents who are challenged in guiding their children who are searching for authentic love to shed light for us we welcome our speaker for tonight, Mr. Francis Lee. As we transition to this enlightening discussion, let us invite Father JP to lead us in a moment of prayer and to share a few words. Thank you. I'd like to welcome everyone. And uh, we begin with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Saint Gabriel, pray for us. Saint Paul, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's nice to see all of you here tonight. The title of this last part is uh, The Fullness of Love of POB. So, um, I taught TOB here in Southridge. Now I'm teaching research, not theology of the body, but it's still a part of a uh, very, very much close to me, uh, the theology of the body. The, the theology of the body, as, as you all probably have learned in the past couple of uh, sessions you've had, was thought of by John Paul II, and it was shared to us uh, during the Wednesday audience. And of course, but it wasn't called TOB yet, but later on, uh, it was called TOB, the theologists could call it TOB. My first question is this, and I hope you can share your thoughts here. What makes a man or woman attractive? Wow, that's uh, virtues, okay? Personality, cheerfulness, virtues possessed by one, fun to be will, okay? Art for others. At ease with himself or herself, okay? Confidence, passion, being. Wow. Thank you for that, Father. You know, um, when, when I was, when, when you ask young people, when you ask kids, actually, what makes a man more attractive, the first thing that they would say is that they have to look pretty, right? They have to look, uh, they have to look handsome. But then, of course, maybe because of, uh, because of age and you've matured and you've had many sessions already in TOB, uh, the answers are, are more of about the person now, which is good. But we cannot discount the fact that physical appearance is very important in attraction. Okay, while personality and other components are actually there, physical beauty is what normally makes a person attractive at first. And we cannot, we cannot remove that from, that rea from reality, okay? So, uh, the second question I have is this. Is attraction the same as loving? Of course, you know, the answer to this, right? But you more me than this. Just please answer the, the question. Is attraction the same as loving? No, no, yes and no, no, okay. Love is deeper than attraction, okay. Well, if, if you ask... Um, Kids also, if you ask that, I normally, I used to teach TOB in grade 10. When you ask them, attraction the same as loving, the answer would always be no. 
And as you grow older, we realize that actually loving is very attractive. Right? But then you love, it's also attraction. But of course, more than that, we will talk about this in a in a sense tonight. So I like the the second part is this. So I, I ask you questions. And then I'd like to share this with you. One of the things I share with, with young people is this. That types of relationships. Attraction can be loving and loving can be attraction. We have to understand the types of relationships. The acronym is LIFE, L-I-F-E. It's love, infatuation, friendship, and exploitation. Of course, when we speak of love, um, sorry, before we put off love, let's talk about infatuation first. Infatuation, this is where attraction really is. So, when we look at infatuation, um, of course, that's the normal attraction that we have, right? So the, the eros, or this, it's a sexual type of, of attraction. Like, um, there's the physical beauty, the physical uh, attributes of a person. And from infatuation, normally, it can lead to another level, right? Maybe to friendship, then maybe to love later on. Um, friendship, of course, the philia, you know, the, the, uh, our, our brotherhood or sisterhood, or as, as, as siblings, right? Um, and then, of course, love is the unconditional form of a relationship. Exploitation, on the other hand, is the opposite of love. So love and, and exploitation, these are two extremes, right? So exploitation is using another person for whatever it is, okay? For one's gain or for another person's gain. Um, so when we exploit, there is absolutely no love in it. Later, there's a slide here on the difference between using and loving. We'll go there. And when we see also of love, for, perhaps, especially for, for young professionals, this is a talk. And if you go into the different applications such as Bumble or maybe Talking It's Bagel, you, you'll find there's a love language, right? So there's acts of service, receiving gifts, quality time, words of affirmation, and physical touch. And you know, while, while this is a construct it's probably true for some people right when, when a person receives gifts that person feels love some of us probably here really like that when we like um getting gifts from other people and that affirms him or her that oh this person loves me this person cares for me same as with quality time same as with words of affirmation some people need you need to tell them you know you, you look beautiful today you look, you look good today. You, you look happy today. And of course, a physical touch, right? Like holding hands, it's important. Giving hugs, receiving hugs. Um, and acts of service from maybe doing something good for another person. And these languages of love, actually, are, they're very important in any relationship because it is here where we are affirmed of our person, of that the person actually loving us. And when we speak of these things, uh, I mentioned some of the love is unconditional. When we speak of these things, we speak of four criteria. There is this um, article on the theology of the body that says the fullness of love has these four things. Sensuality or sexual attraction, affectivity and sentiments, affirmation of the person, God's presence in human love. If you're wondering why I asked the questions a while ago, it's because of this, right? What makes a person attractive? Attraction is very important in understanding what this love is. The, 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 the languages of love is important so that we understand so that fullness of love. It falls under affectivity and sentiments and even affirmation of the person. And when you combine all of them and put God in it, then that becomes the fullness of love because of God's presence in that love. So let's go through each one of this. Okay? So we begin with attraction. Attraction, again, is important. The physical attraction of a person. And normally when a person is attracted to someone, when the person is drawn to that person, the person initiates a conversation. Maybe they become friends. Maybe they become lovers later on. They don't even they become married or they get married. But without that attraction, there won't be, unless it's a forced relationship like in a classroom where everybody has to talk to each other because you're all classmates. Okay? 
um, that attraction is what motivates the person to approach someone or even to respond to someone. Right? So, this is verse in the Bible, from the book of Genesis. It is not good for man to be alone. So, when, when God saw Adam alone, Adam, I, I suppose in your previous uh, classes, was actually the, uh, was in the original solitude, right? The, the term, that he was alone. And he was sad in that state. So Adam had to look for something attractive to him. But it's so sad that he wasn't able to see anything attractive to him in the garden. So first God placed him to sleep and God made a woman from him. There's this clip from this movie. It actually discusses this attraction. But I'd like you to pay attention to the way it was delivered, not the message, okay? The way it was delivered. And, tell, and I'll ask you about your thoughts later on, okay? First of all, I'd like to welcome the Virgin Martyr Girls and thank them for coming. <laughs> Friday Novena this coming Friday and now let me introduce to you Father Abruzzi who will be giving the first talk thanks Father oh, wait just a second Father Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. As you know, these dances are designed to help you learn to interact with one another in a way befitting young men and women of a strong moral fiber. You're all at an age now when you're perhaps beginning to notice the difference between the boys and the girls. And just as she is at every other important moment of your life, the church is here to guide you. Many of you will be experiencing certain feelings, feelings which you might be inclined to confuse with love. But ladies and gentlemen, never confuse love with the deadliest of the seven deadly sins. Lust, ladies and gentlemen, has undone and cast down into the eternal fires of hell even the most advanced souls. There is a beast living within each and every one of you. A filthy beast whose name is... That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Lust is the beast within you. The beast that wants to come into the eternal fires of hell, where for all eternity your flesh will be ripped from your body by grotesque serpents with razor sharp teeth. Where for all eternity your blood will boil, your bones will burn, and your marrow will be reduced to a putrid black slime. And for what? There are a few moments of weakness that led you to admire the shape of somebody's buttocks. Any questions? Very well then. Have a nice time, enjoy the dance, and I'll see you all next week. Any thoughts on, on, on that? The priest said, Father oh, Rusi said, there's a beast living in each and every one of you, a filthy beast. And it was actually very frightening. Imagine if you were a student there. So the, the story here of the, the movie is, it's an all boys with an all, all girls school. The all girls school, the girl's name is the Virgin Martyr Girls. And the boys school is called St. Anthony. Okay. So, 
um, the the message of the priest here was actually very interesting. That that there's attraction, right? Attraction is important, but to be worry to, to be wary of lust. But of course, it was presented in a, in a in a bad way. And I wanted to show you that because sometimes, and then I think um, some of us probably could fall into it. Sometimes we become very scared to talk about that attraction. Okay, to talk about that attraction to beauty, on physical beauty. A while ago, when I asked right about uh, what makes a person attractive, many probably answered about personality. And I, I actually I'm thinking right now, why was it that it was that those were the answers and not actually the physical beauty of a person? Because normally again, attraction starts with the physical appearance of a person. And when we forget about it, we become very stoic in that situation. Like how the priest said it, like how the nuns were reacting to what the priest was saying. But we become stoic, but we, we, we tend to negate what's pleasurable in the attraction. Right? So, so for them, for story, according to Christopher West, pleasure is an evil to reject. If it feels good, it must be sinful. It negates the world's pleasures. On the other hand, we have what we call the addicts. Like this guy over there, um, we saw him, like, I want them virgin martyr girls. The addicts, on the other hand, like, everything is attractive to them. And they just want to be with that person already, maybe to have sex with that person already, or to do something with that person. And, but, and for them, pleasure is an idol to be sure to be worshipped. If it feels good, just do it. They inflate the world's pleasures. And now for us, and then since you've been learning TOB, there's a challenge from Christopher West that we have to be mystics in this fullness of love. And for, for mystics, Pleasure is an icon that points to heaven. That if you're attracted, attracted to a person, well, and you want to be with a person, then that should lead you to heaven. And that that person should go to heaven because of you. If it feels good, it's meant to be a preview of common attractions. It's, it's, it's the sublimates the world's pleasures. To level them. Right? So, Sometimes, we might be focused too much on being worried about our own attractions. But attraction is important. And from there, we level it up. We become a mystic. So here is what I was saying a while ago, right? So I have a body, and I am a body. Between using and loving. When we use the body, when we say, I have a body, it is a utilitarian attitude towards the body and the person. And this is what normally now the um, the leftists would, would, would say, right? This is my body. I have a right over my body. I can do whatever I want in my body. But if you say, I am a body, you're actually loving. It is a respect for the body and the person. So we have to learn that love. Because through that love, we'll be able to, to, to find whatever we're looking for, the happiness we're looking for. And in order for us to develop that, we also look into the activity, affectivity and the sentiment. So there's attraction, but there's affectivity and sentiment. And here, emotions are very much involved. Because it's either it makes us happy or makes us sad, makes us maybe worried or anxious or maybe excited. Imagine that love, those languages of love I was mentioning a while ago. I mentioned a while ago. Whenever someone gives you a gift, are you happy? Is this gift or you, you want getting gifts, right? But if you don't like flowers, you like chocolate, someone gives you a flower, you still are not happy, right? And we have to be mindful of those emotions we, we, we experience when, when someone tries to actually love us. And these emotions should help us, of course, again, feel happiness. We have to learn how to choose to be happy. Okay? And to love, the sentimental value is caring for each other even when we're angry. So mindful, being mindful of those emotions can actually help us get through this, on the sentimentality, the affectivity. 
But even when we're angry at the person, we're able to still show care for the person. And that's sentimental. Okay, there's another video I want to show you um, on sentimentality and affectivity. I suppose every, every one of you, every one of us here, we, we love Jollibee, right? Uh, Chicken Joy, Jolly Spaghetti, right? So there's this nice video from Jollibee, Quentong Jollibee. I suppose you, you've seen some of these commercials. And this particular commercial, um, I think, really shows that sentimentality. But no matter what happens, like, there's a, that affect is still very much possible. And that affect still, can still lead us to love. Or affect leads us to love. See my husband? Yeah, it's her. Ron? It's been a year since we broke up. Never thought I'd see him here. Everything's coming back. Juan, oh, no. It's okay, I got this. Iba siya sa lahat ng makilala ko. You want me to drive? Okay lang, kaya ko na to. She can very well take care of herself. And I admire her for it. And that's how I've always been. Ron! So sorry. Nag-extend kami ng coach ko. I grabbed something on the way because I was super hungry. Nag-order pa naman ako para sa ating dalawa. Okay lang yan. Take out ko na lang. Yun lang. Nakakalimutan niya ako kahit sa mga simpleng bagay. Oh, di ba yun yung k-drama na gusto mong panoorin natin? Panoorin natin mamaya? Sorry, episode 6 na ako. Pwede niyo ba na lang? Admittedly, there were times na hindi ko siya naiisip. By the way, nagkayayaan kami ng girls. I got tickets na for all of us for next month. Tickets? To Seoul. Seoul? Eh di ba matagal na nating planong pumunta doon together? Han, okay lang yun. Next time, tayo naman. Tayo. Eh para sa'yo, para namang walang tayo eh. Tuloy, she pushed people away. Ba't di mo ako maintindihan? Miles, lagi na lang. Lagi na lang kasi. I'm sorry. I'm done. Okay, fine. Edi, we're done. But I didn't mean to hurt him. Relax, Ron. Relax. I'm awkward nito. Hi. Hi. Sit down. Okay, lang. Yeah, sure. Come on, I'm good. Ikaw. Hey, man. Sa Jollibee. Yeah, okay, Ingat. See you. <laughs> I have to go, Ron. Sorry. Ako na, Miles. Thanks, Ron. Sige, Ron. Bye. a year ago. I'm happier now. Now that I've found her. Again. I never go far chance encounter would show me my chance for me. I've learned to accept her for the woman that she is. I realized na hindi kailangang sarili ko lang ang mundo ko. This time, I'm open to share my world with him and make it work for good.
that really was about the sentimentality and affection. So, uh, sentimentality and affection is very important because, you know, it, 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 this is related with each other. That, that love is not only a matter of feeling. Right? Yes, it, it's good that we have emotions. It's good that we have um, those moments when we become happy, when we, when we feel killing, when we feel affected by the situation. So, but, but we have to be also mindful that love is not only a matter of feeling. The feeling is important. It, gi it gives that feeling of sentimentality, of affection, so attraction, and then feelings. But we have to understand that love is not only this matter of feeling. Rather, it is a decision. And when we decide to love, we we'll decide to affirm the person, our person, and the other person. Okay, so the affirmation of the person now, we go back to, a while, to, to the Bible verse a while ago, that Adam was alone, and God saw that Adam was alone, because Adam was never attracted to anyone, or anything, rather anything in the, in the, in the creation of, of, of God, in the garden. So God thought of creating another person for him, in the person of Eve. And when Adam woke from his sleep, the first words he said was, Here at last is bone of my bones. And here is at last another person that I am attracted to, that's attractive to me. And that itself is the affirmation of the person. So if a, if a guy and a girl are they're attracted to each other, and they said they, that we are meant for each other, we are affirming that potential love, the potential relationship that they have for each other. This is another, it's two people loving, but man and woman. And there is this nice uh, uh, line, uh, I learned this from Father Hassan. He said, a woman without her man is nothing. Woman without her, man is nothing. And woman without her man is nothing. More than complementary, actually they need each other. Because being with each other affirms them. Okay? So the man affirms the woman and the woman affirms the man. So our bodies tell our incompleteness, that complementary. That, that that person completes another person. We can only be completed by our complement. And that leads us now so from attraction to sentimentality and the affirmation of a person, not to God's presence in human love. And when you see God's presence in human love, we talk of the story. Remember this story? Who remembers this story? This is a story of Anyone? Tobias, yes. What is the story here? Do you remember the story here? Tobias and Sarah? Anyone? You can just raise your hand and you can unmute and then tell us the story. Or the holy marriage. So, right, well, help. Okay. Sarah was married seven times. All of them died. Then it was Tobias's turn. And you know, the, the father of Sarah even prepared a um, this, uh, prepared a grave for, for, for Tobias. But why did the Tobias didn't die compared to all of Sarah's past husband? What was the key? So after they got married, what did they do? They prayed together. And then according to some beliefs, it took them, I think, two or three nights before they consummated their marriage. They just kept on praying that it would be a holy marriage, that they would be lost in that marriage. And so when we speak of God putting now, being part of, of human love, it is actually marriage. It is marriage, the union of the husband and the, and the wife in the church in the presence of God. And that now completes the harmonious relationship between man and woman. Then of course the consummation of it with the offspring. And we remember here that love is trinitarian. There's a lover, there's a beloved that is equal to love. 
to the lover plus the beloved equals love. Like the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So I plus you equals to me. And the Father, Son, and Spirit, Christ and the Church, male and female. And I'd like to end this sharing with this quote from T.O.B. The thing about sex is different from the fantasizing about sex. The T.O.B. challenges to think about sex in its deepest meaning and significance. We are also interested with sex because it responds to the deepest need of the human heart. Attraction is very important. Sentimentality is important. We lead to the affirmation of the person. And then when we move on from that, we now put God in that human love. There grows that fullness of love. Mm-hmm.